Hi everyone, it's 10 a.m. So that means it's, a, it's time for another episode of Senti Talks, where we talk about all things AI. My name is Andrew and I'm the head of bot design at Senti One. And today I'm gonna to talk about the differences between generative AI, such as ChatGPT and large language models, and conversational AI. I'm also gonna give you some examples of why, in my view, conversational AI is still a better solution for businesses building chatbots and voice bots, but also talk about the ways you can still leverage uh, generative AI, ChatGPT, within the chatbot building process, because it's still a very good asset uh, for conversation designers and bot designers. Um, and I'd like to start off with talking about the history and then talking about the differences between generative AI and conversational AI. And when you look at this timeline here, back in 2016, we had these very simple bots on Messenger and Facebook um, that were kind of simple point and click type of bots that weren't truly conversational because you had to follow a very linear path and also had limited business use cases because they were not fully integrated with business systems or CRMs, knowledge bases, and needed quite a bit of maintenance as well. But then we moved on to multi-channel where we spread to different messaging channels, but also into voice, thinking how popular uh, Siri was back then and Alexa, that kind of thing. And then other technologies such as speech recognition, text-to-speech. And this is where we start seeing the evolution, right? That hmm, bots can be quite useful and easily deployed on different channels. But they're still kind of lacking some kind of understanding component. But then natural language really evolved. Um, the AI technology part of it came into, into being. So we had NLU, NLP, machine learning, all these kind of technologies that came together to deliver these more natural conversations that are more non-linear, two-way, and were a much more pleasing kind of experience, but also for businesses that you could uh, integrate well with knowledge bases, CRMs, and that kind of thing. And now here in 2023, we're seeing this big rise in GPT-powered virtual assistants, such as ChatGPT or Google's BARD. Um, and we're seeing all sorts of applications of GPT models, um, but in particular for bot designers, using it as a tool to improve our bot building processes. So what I want to go over as well is let's go deeper into the differences and advantages. So with conversational AI versus ChatGPT, there are some key differences between those two. Conversational AI, in general, is the term used to describe the technologies between, behind building uh, bot interfaces, voice and chat. And technology behind that is natural language, natural language understanding, natural language processing, using machine learning and AI and having these custom tailor-built data sets and models. Now that's really good because you can kind of guarantee that it's trained on a specific data set for your specific business and your specific use cases. You can also include tailor-made content from, for example, your customer transcripts and train it on that specific data. Whereas with ChatGPT, um, you know, it's trained on the whole wide web from, you know, all of history until, well, for an example of ChatGPT until 2021. So, you know, it's not very specific to your customer use case. For conversation AI, you can also have that almost guarantee that you're still getting that good accuracy. Um, for example, with, chat, with, with Senti One's NLU models, you can still achieve a very high accuracy of over 90%. Um, and then it's also easier, especially via a platform such as ours and other chatbot building platforms out, out there, is that you can still customize it. You have control over the natural language model. You have control over the outputs. Um, and what that also means is that you have control over the, da the data, privacy, security, you're keeping it within the organization. And then you compare that with ChatGPT, um, which in the, in the case of OpenAI, it's kind of a black box. You don't know the training da data set behind it. You cannot really predict, well, you can predict, but you cannot really control exactly the outputs. And as you all may know, it does have a tendency to hallucinate. So it's not 
as reliable and as secure um, in a business environment um, than, for example, conversational AI is. So that's a little bit about the differences. Um, but let's go deeper into uh, the, te the technology behind it. So here we have the components of conversational AI. So one example, a person asks a question, we feed that to a natural language model, and then we assign meaning to it based on what we've trained. So of course, if we train it on say Ikea, we expect questions to be about Ikea, for example, particular product names or Ikea store locations, et cetera. And we're using all those elements to bring together meaning and understanding and then delivering a response via dialogue management so we can control what kind of response we're going to deliver, where we're obtaining the information from, whether it's the directly to the IKEA database, knowledge base, et cetera, or via some other kind of integration, or maybe it's a more complex question you want to redirect to an agent. And then we generate that response back, whether it's voice or chat, we take into account all these elements, the meaning, the content, the dialogue, and de deliver a response, an accurate response back to the user. And then we look at the components of generative AI. So with the example of ChatGPT, it looks really simple, of course. I mean, that's one of the benefits. It is simple. You deliver an input, a prompt, a question, and ChatGPT comes out with an output. And then it does all that magic behind the scenes with the large language model and the open AI technology, which you can't really see behind the scenes. So that's one comparison with the previous step is that you can see the training data and you know what's been trained. And you can also see the content, the dialogues that should be delivered. So that's the components um, behind it. But let's maybe uh, look at a little bit uh, about the some examples of this in action. So let's see, go to this slide here. So here are the possible kind of conversations you could have um, and comparing conversational AI with ChatGPT. So on the left, we have this banking example. What's the recent mortgage rate for a first time buyer? And then here we have an example that it's obtaining information, current information from, for example, this bank's H HSBC's knowledge base and also delivering the direct content link as well. Whereas on the right, unfortunately, and it's quite common in ChatGPT's uh, case that it doesn't have the up-to-date information or the specific business information. Here's the next one. So a little bit more of a touchy subject. So if you, you know, want to talk about brand re reputation and management, on the left you have this question. And you know, should you be trained on that topic? Probably not. You want to steer the conversation back to something to help the customer about. But with ChatGPT, it's kind of thinking and creating something um, out, of, out of the internet, right? So it's developed or created a response about Amber Heard and Johnny Depp. You know, it's not maybe relevant to your business use case at all, right? Here we have another example. So you know, if, if something happens and you want to refresh, <laughs> refresh the bot or refresh the web page, um, this tells you, right, it's going to close the session. Do you want to finish the conversation? And then on the right, it's generated a response that, oh, actually, that doesn't exist. You're imagining, you're delusional, and it's just hallucinating a kind of response, which is probably not the best kind of user experience when you're designing and developing a chatbot in the finance industry, especially. You can think of that as other use cases, such as healthcare as well, or insurance. You want to deliver um, an accurate response as best as possible. But you know, you with ChatGPT, with generative AI, I mean, there's still pros and cons. Um, so you know, you can still talk about how ChatGPT can help you in the bot building process. Um, and that's quite important because um, the technology is so advanced that it is very helpful in different 
scenarios. And for example, here at my team and here at 71, we're already using it within the bot building process to um, help us on our platform develop chatbots and voice bots. So here, five of them, for example, building the NLU. You can use ChatGPT or a large language model to develop and create training data sets, which is very useful. Instead of having to think of all the different ways someone might ask about, how do I order a new bank card? Or where is my money? What's my balance? All that kind of stuff. You can allow GPT to help you develop those. You can also help, if you know about entities, you can also help create libraries and synonyms of your different product names or different synonyms for banking products, such as credit cards and debit cards. This will help you get started and help you develop that understanding if you don't have it already or other options as well. So you can create prompts that will help you create those data sets. You can also learn how customers, users will interact with your bot. So if you want to generate some kind of user journey of someone applying for a mortgage, a loan, you can already get that, that list of steps or common list of steps that you can start off with and develop into your bot flow, which is very useful and helpful. You can also use it for quality assurance and testing your bot because one of the most time-consuming <laughs> Um, uh, time consuming things about building a bot is testing it so here you can create different scenarios and use, uh, user stories of the different ways someone might go through your bot and ask different questions or go through your little processes of applying for a bank loan or what have you and you can test it against your bot as well so you can create all these examples and scenarios and then another cool one which I find quite helpful um, especially the creative aspect is generating uh, bot responses. So if you have that flow about asking for a loan or um, losing your bank card, ordering a new one, what have you, you can prompt how the bot should sound like, the response in particular, uh, make sure it's professional, formal or not, or reflect your brand and add some keywords in the prompt. Also that... Um, you can define um, the character and the personality, which is useful. And you can say, hey, create me a response for what I should say or a bot should say to losing a bank card, for example. And then you can put that into your bot, modify it if you need to, review it, and speed up the whole bot development process and launch your bot even faster, which is very, very useful. So I have some examples. So this is where we could use uh, ChatGPT to create um, training data sets for different intents. So and then you can, I mean, with ChatGPT, you can even ex export that as a text file and import it into different platforms. So you can do it directly, which is very, very useful. Um, and actually with our platform, for example, and I've seen some others out there, you can actually generate it directly within the user interface of the platform, which is really cool and a super use case. Here's the example of generating those entities. So synonyms, all the different ways you can say a different pro uh, a certain word or product. So definitely useful as well. Defining user journey, so the step-by-steps of a customer going through um, a certain process, um, the back and back and from messages from the customer and user, and then you could transfer that as well. And particularly with our platform, you can also import it directly to our visual flow builder and have it all kind of already pre-built. And then you go in there and you modify it as you need it and make sure it all works. So you don't have to do it one by one and manually. So that also speeds up the process. Creating new flows. So there is a way, and what we've been experimenting here with at Senti One is, what about creating the whole flow itself? And for example, delivering or generating some kind of JSON file, which works with our particular platform or maybe another platform out there to generate all the steps um, within the visual dialogue building component of a platform. And that's really cool because that means uh, you can import it straight away and you're you can already start to use it and test it and deploy it very, very quickly, which is super, super useful. What else we got? So testing, as I mentioned, 
quality assurance and testing is very, very useful. Um, so you can generate all sorts of creative questions that a customer might ask um, to your bot. So you could use your customer transcripts, but if you don't have those yet, you could use ChatGPT to help you in that so that you're covering a lot of the, a lot of the different questions and use cases already. And the very useful one, as mentioned before, is the creation part, creating those bot responses, the, the different steps, how your bot should sound like, giving examples of that, and basically inspiring bot designers and conversation designers on how that should be created. So that's super cool as well. All right. So coming up to the end, and I really wanted to kind of sum up everything uh, I've spoken about today. So, you know, generative AI at the moment, very useful, but you still got to be cautious with it. Would you use it in a real bot scenario and let gener generative AI do everything for you? I would say no. Conversational AI platforms, you have a lot more control. Um, you can deliver custom tailor-built flows and processes based on exactly the business's use case. Um, and the more important component is, you know, keeping your data secure, keeping it private as well. So conversational AI will still keep it there within, um, within the platform or even on premise if that platform allows enterprise ready kind of solutions. So you can really keep it all in house, which is super, super useful. Um, and that's what we're doing here at Set2. So my team, we're using it to help our building process but not exactly to deliver the end business use case because I don't think it's ready yet. I don't want to have a scenario where it just, you know, <laughs> creates some kind of nightmare PR scenario where it answers something incorrectly. People put it all over Twitter and oops, your brand kind of gets affected. So I don't think it's ready yet. So I'd really appreciate the control that conversational AI platforms still have. And you just use it hand in hand, hand in hand to deliver your chatbots even faster in a way. So thank you very much for joining um, this edition of Senti Talks. Um, if you have any comments, of course, leave them in the comments section below. Um, we'll be happy to answer them. And you know, keep posted on future sessions. Uh, and I'm sure generative AI and this kind of technology is always going to evolve and there'll be new stuff to talk about all the time. Thank you very much for listening today.